Hello and what up, fellow scale model nerds. This is Tom Pearson, aka the Scale Nerd, coming back to you. And uh, see, this is the third video in my series, Overwatch. So we're looking at a Polaris uh, Quadra bike project. So with a Navy SEAL sniper team. Uh, again, this is the third video. First video was the build. Second video was the painting, basically base colors, that type of thing. This video, the third video, is going to be the weathering, distressing, and kind of bringing the, the bike to life. Uh, next video will be the, the figures or characters that will go with it, the Navy Spotter, uh, Navy SEAL Spotter, and the Navy SEAL Sniper. Uh, then we'll go into a video on the diorama. So we should have a pretty complete comprehensive project from beginning to end when we get done with the whole video series. So I hope you enjoy this and learn something from it. I'm gonna be using some new techniques and new materials that I've not used before. Uh, definitely gonna get into some uh, dry pigments, uh, something just not done before, but it's gonna open the door for me for a lot, a lot of new techniques that I've not been able to do previously. Uh, actually gonna do a little bit of sculpting in this video too. So let's go ahead and get started on Overwatch video part three, weathering, distressing, and bring it to life. Let's go. Okay, so here's, we're gonna start working on this Polaris vehicle, the weathering. So I started out with this paneline accent color. Uh, it's an enamel based product that's basically a very, very diluted black that you apply uh, with the little brush applicator that comes on the bottle and it sinks down into the crevices and details of the model um, through its uh, surface viscosity and properties of the paint. It will just, again, stay down in the deeper areas, accenting the highlights, and will get a lot uh, darker in those areas. And then in the higher surface areas, uh, it'll just kind of roll off down into those crevices and become very thin. Then once you've done that, there's just a lot of excess uh, that kind of bleeds out over onto the surface areas. So I take some enamel thinner and go in and just kind of clean it up. So just by taking the little brush with some enamel thinner, you just kind of feather it back off so you can get it, tidy it up a little bit. So now I'm mixing up some acrylic highlight paint. So taking the base color and lightening it up, go over some of the highlight details like the bolts and the top of the hub and several different areas like that and just kind of highlight them. Here you see me going and working on some initial steps for the chipping. So to start the chipping, I take a lightened version of the base color and uh, go through and uh, just kind of detail some little spots where I would anticipate there being excessive chip wear, scratches, that type of thing. Once I've done that, I take a darker color, um, kind of a metal color, um, dirty, rusty type metal color, and just kind of go in and... Uh, add it where the where I previously hit the lighter color, I go back inside of that. So you end up basically with a dark dot, for lack of, lack of a better word, with a bright outline around it. And it kind of gives you a three-dimensional look of paint layers where you've worn through the outer layer. So I like to keep these uh, materials on hand. So I have this little uh, squirt bottles that I fill up for my acetone, my enamel paint thinner, some oil thinner, obviously some water, and it's always good to have a little bit of this uh, Tamiya X20A acrylic paint thinner around. Let's talk about this next step. So uh, previously with the um, panel line marker, I actually used that to create dark shadows in the recesses, because when you put that fluid on there, uh, it goes down into the recessed areas and then uh, it, it rolls off of the higher areas and then you can wipe that off to get even more of it off and essentially darken the recesses, the cracks, the crannies and so forth to create that three-dimensional feel to it and the shadowing effect. Now we're going to be doing some washes with the pigments, but since we're working with uh, the lighter colors, the sands and, and the dirt colors, it's actually going to be in one way redundant because it's also going to go down into the recesses and it's going to get kind of wiped off or, or, or clear off of the higher areas. So it's kind of redundant stuff, but it's actually part of the layering process. Here's for the pigment set that I use from Vallejo. So these dry powder pigments, um, it comes four uh, different colors in this dirt and dust set. So you get some various different colors of sand and dirt uh, uh, from light to black. And it's just a dry pigment with no 
a, a binder material in it or basically glue adhesive to make it stick to the surface. So I just take a brush and pull out a little bit of from each bottle and mix it together uh, as you would regular paint to get the color I'm looking for. There's a lot of different thinners uh, and binders you can use or make a binder specifically for this material. Or they say you can use uh, acrylic paint thinner, airbrush thinner, or in this case I'm using an enamel thinner. I found so far for me that works best. So um, what I've done is created a little bit of a wash uh, that I'm going back over top of the whole uh, the whole bike with a kind of a darker, dirtier, um, sandy brown color. Wash it in kind of like I did with the panel line color, and then take a sponge and wipe off all the higher surface area. So again. Like the panel line color, it stays down in the darker areas. And it also gives a little bit of a, a filter effect to, to the bike. So I've done the same thing here with uh, a darker color, mostly black with a little bit of brown in there and going over the engine areas uh, and down where the feet are to try to make it a little bit darker and dirtier in some of the grimier areas of the bike. Here I'm taking some brown uh, browner color and applying it directly onto the vehicle in its dry form, kind of sprinkling it on there. Then you take the enamel thinner and uh, just apply it in drops on there and through a capillary action, it saturates into the dry pigment and makes it adhere to the vehicle. Now this isn't a permanent adhesion. It'll come off on your fingers if you're not careful. It might not do that with true uh, pigment binder, but with the enamel thinner, it does. And what it does is it gives you a natural dirt look instead of a, a brown painted look. I'm doing the same thing here with more of a yellowish color. Um, sometimes in uh, Middle Eastern areas, the sand has a little bit of a yellowish orangish tint to it. So I'm adding a little bit of that. And again, it's a layering process until I get the look that I'm going for. I ultimately thought it was a little bit too yellow later and went back and tweaked it a little bit. Now with uh, some uh, yellowish orangish color over the muffler, I'm taking some Vallejo acrylic wash and using that to bind the pigment to the muffler to give that a little bit different color. Here I've got a little bit grayer color of dirt. So again, going through and applying it in um, layers as a, a dry dusting pigment on top of the vehicle and then using the enamel thinner and capillary action to go ahead and get it to uh, stick to the vehicle and give it a little bit more of a natural, uh, dirty, sandy look. Uh, once it dries, it gets a lot lighter, so be careful. Don't get shocked by how dark it looks when you first put it on. When it dries, it lightens up a lot. So just like with the, uh, the, uh, the panel line marker, I go through and with some uh, enamel thinner and start washing it back off. This is a good example here of how much the color lightened up when I blew on it with an airbrush and, and dried it all up. Uh, so you end up with a pretty uh, believable, dirty, sandy, uh, grimy appearance on the vehicle. So now this color here, mixing up some brown and black and lighter colors of sand into a wash and just brush down the entire uh, tire and wheel. And once that dries, you get this look. So it looks a lot more like dried dirt and mud on there. Then take a sponge with some enamel thinner and wipe off all the high surface areas. So then it just recesses down into the tread pattern, giving you a very natural um, sandy dirt dried look. So now I want to try to really lock all of these uh, treatments in by taking some matte varnish, acrylic matte varnish, thin it up, put it in the airbrush, make sure it's flowing well, and give it an overcoat, a basic uh, clear coat over the entire thing with a matte finish to it. Now this kind of locks everything in and seals it in so none of these previous steps will come off on your fingers as you handle the vehicle. It will darken the color just a little bit and and it won't be quite as flat as it was originally, but it still comes off really good. Got to do the same thing to the wheels. Now with the wheels done, ready to go ahead and glue on each wheel. So um, 
attaching the back wheel, front wheels, and then the spare tire that I created with the resin epoxy mold. These are the additional stowage items that I painted up in the previous video. So I ended up changing my mind and deciding to put the one set on the front and the other set on the back, leaving enough room for the sniper to sit there as opposed to piling them all on the front. Now with some Milliput Superfine White Epoxy Putty, go ahead and take the two parts, uh, mix and fold those together until they get one uh, little ball of uh, finished uh, epoxy uh, mix. Flatten it out and start cutting it down into a shape that I'm going to mold. I found these uh, reference photos that showed uh, something that's kind of like a saddlebag, for lack of a better word, that goes on to the fender of the Polaris bike. So I'm uh, trying to make something like that by hand. So we'll see how this turns out. But I use water on my spatula there to try to use that as a molding tool and it won't, then way the putty won't stick to the tool as you're going through and doing some molding. And I can go in there and tweak it and detail a little bit with an X-Acto knife the same way. So this stuff needs to sit for about uh, probably an hour to two hours before it gets hard enough that you can continue to mold it as you see me doing here with this little fine Q-tip, uh, you know, up until about an hour or two, it's just, it's just too soft and uh, you'll tear it up just trying to handle it. So uh, you gotta let it harden up, harden up for about an hour or two and then you can do some finer tweaking. Next day, I took some tape, basically masking tape, and cut off some strips. And by applying each strip, I can add the additional detail that I saw in the reference photos of this uh, saddlebag pack. So I just tape them on using their own uh, adhesive on the back of the tape. Ultimately, once I shoot the primer over all this, I get here, uh, it's looking pretty good and then go ahead and paint it and do a little bit of detail and weathering and it's a uh, done deal. So now I'm ready to go ahead and mount it on the fender where I've seen it in the reference photo. So now going in and doing a little bit more uh, dirt and weathering on the um, stowage items and then taking the thinner and tweaking it back and dialing it back in a little bit so it's only gathering around the areas that I would anticipate it to gather and not just completely making the thing filthy. Uh, use the airbrush to blow it and make it a little dry. This is a little trick I came up with, uh, taking vinyl gloves, just cut off uh, regular um, vinyl gloves into different small pieces. You can, it works great for making like rags and towels and tarps and those types of things. So I got this little square piece that I went ahead and painted up with some acrylic, dry it off, and then kind of fold it up and shove it down in this little pocket. So it's kind of like a little rag. Um, or towel that uh, I shoved down in there and ultimately glue that down in place once I get it shaped the way I want and take some acrylics and do some um, shadowing and highlighting and so forth to give it a more of a real three-dimensional look. Turned out pretty nice. So here we have it. This is the finished quadra bike. All the weathering done, um, the stressing, um, just all the different little tricks you do to bring this model to life. Uh, still waiting to do the figures, and that'll come next. Okay, so there you have it. There she is, my 135th scale uh, Polaris Quadra bike from UFAM Models, nice little resin kit. So we've got three videos under our belt now. We've got the build video, the uh, painting video, and now this, the extension of the painting video is the weathering and distressing, and just kind of bringing it to life. So I hope you learned something in these videos or at least enjoyed watching. I know I learned a lot uh, over time. Uh, I hope to, pick up more techniques like this and share them with you. And as I, sh as I learn from your videos that you put online, uh, using the 
dry pigments, for example, it was something completely new for me I wanted to share with you. I learned definitely some things I'll do differently the next time or how to do it better and faster. Uh, same thing with the sculpting and so forth. So uh, again, thanks for coming and visit the video, uh, visiting this video. Come back and check out my future videos in the Overwatch series on uh, the figures and the diorama build. And uh, visit me on Facebook. My Facebook page is The Scale Nerd. Come and check it out. Got a lot of other sh nice shots, uh, projects, uh, photographs, tips and tricks on there. and put some videos on there as well. Uh, and uh, also keep looking at my, subscribe to my YouTube channel and hopefully I'll be growing that library up as time goes by. And hey, I might even actually get some decent video equipment so I can do a better job of shooting these videos. It's kind of difficult doing it without the right equipment lighting, but making the best with what I have right now until I got something better to work with. So until the next video, take care and have safe, happy modeling. Bye. <laughs>